Welcome to this tutorial in which we are going to discuss a problem called set metric zeros. So let's first understand the problem statement. So the problem statement is very simple. Uh, we are given a matrix A of size M cross N where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. Uh, and uh, it only consists of zeros and ones. So a matrix consists of zeros and ones. If an element is zero, we need to set the entire row and column to zero. And uh, the important concept here, which uh, is mostly asked uh, in the interviews, is we need to do this by minimizing the space and the time complexity. So the focus is not on the simplicity or just solving this problem, but it's on the efficiency here. So this is a uh, very frequently asked in Amazon and Oracle interviews. So let's first take into consideration some sample cases. So suppose the input matrix is this, which is consisting of ones and zeros as can be seen. So the output metric should be this. Now what is happening? As you can see, this particular element is zero. So we need to set all the elements in this row where this is present as zero and all the elements in this column as well zero. So you can see this is set as zero and this is set as zero. Rest of the elements should remain as it is. So this is the output array or oh, sorry, output matrix here. Now let's consider this example. Okay, so what should be the case here? As you can see, this is zero. So complete row is zero. So complete row is zero and complete column is zero. So and complete column is zero. But again, this is zero. So as you can see, last row is also set to zero. And this column is zero uh, by default because of this element. So as you can see, first row is zero, last row is zero and middle column is zero due to this element or this element, any, any one of them. Okay. So this is the requirement here. Now there are two approaches that we are going to discuss. First would be definitely the brute force approach, which, which would not be that much uh, efficient in terms of co time complexity here. So let's uh, discuss it. So as you can see, we are dealing with metrics. So we will need two loops here. One would be the outer loop to traverse through all the rows. Let's take the I as an index for the loop and an inner loop J to traverse over the column of particular row I. So if a of i comma j is zero means if the cell a of i j is zero that is the element at row i and column j is zero we need to iterate the i row and set all the elements to slash similarly we need to iterate all the j column uh, all the elements in the jth column and set them to hash so what are we doing here let's understand if we find this particular element a of i j is zero we need to traverse the entire row and set it to hash and this entire column and set it to hash. So why are we setting it to hash and not zero? This is the question. Ultimately, we need to set that row and column to zero, but why are we setting it with hash? So just pause it for a minute and think and then resume and understand what's the actual reason. Okay, so I hope that you would have tried on your own. So the actual reason is why we are not setting it to zero because suppose if we set it to zero, okay, zero, zero year and zero, zero year. So what would happen? We are asked to only change those rows and columns for which the initial array or the initial matrix element is zero. So this and this, but when we set all them, all of them to zero on our own, suppose if we set this element to zero as well, then while traversing in our loop, we will also come across this element and zero as zero, and we will end up setting this row and this column as zero as well. And then this column as well, and this column as well. So suppose, so suppose uh, there is only one zero, so the output should be this. But we, what we will do if we set them to zero in the initial phase, then we will be ending it setting up all zeros due to this problem. So let me repeat the output of this particular input matrix should be this with this row as zero and this column as zero. But suppose in the initial phase, if we set it to zero, what will happen? If we set this as zero, this as zero, this also as these two as also zero. So what will happen when we will come across this element, we will not be able to identify whether this zero is the actual initial zero or the zero set by us. Let me repeat. We will not be able to identify whether if this element is zero, was it the zero in the original matrix or it is a zero set by us. So in order to differentiate between these two cases, we need to set it with some another character. Or, or another integer as it is only consisting of one and zero, you can also set it to two. Just we need to differentiate between the original zeros 
and the zeros that we are setting up on our own for the output matrix. So you can set it with any number two, three, four, any number, but make sure that it is set to non zero or non one value. And then iterate the jth column and set all the elements to uh, similar what you have set above. And finally, we need to replace all those extra elements that we have set on on to zero. Now what we'll do, once we have set it to hash, we will be able to identify between the zeros that were in the original matrix and that were in the final matrix. Okay. So then finally, if all these elements are set to hash, just set them to zero before outputting because the question asks us to output them as zeros and not some another element. So this was the brute force approach. But as you can see, for each outer and inner loop element, we need to iterate through all the rows and all the columns to set them zero. So that's why this is of great complexity and not very much efficient. Now let's look at the efficient approach. So approach two is we make use of sets here. So set is a STL provided by C++. So here in the slides, we have also provided you link to a very relevant tutorial of ours where you can understand this concept in very detail with along with an example. So we hope that you find it very interesting and useful. So when you will put these elements into a set, it will only contain them in its uniqueness like one, two, three, four. The repeated elements would all only be considered on at least and exactly once. Okay. That's the property of a set. Now, second step would be an outer loop similar to the previous case and an inner loop to traverse over the columns. Now, if we come across an element, which is zero, suppose a of ij is zero. What we do, we insert that i to the set row. So as you can see, we have created two sets of our own. First is to uh, store the row numbers and second is to store the column numbers. So whenever we come across a of ij as zero, we'll store that i index to the set row and j index to the set column. Why are we doing so? As discussed here, that we don't have to set them zero at the initial phase because it would lead to certain problems discussed previously. So that's why we'll just store them intermediately as index i and j. And then once we have done storing all of those uh, indices, what we'll do, we'll just iterate over those indices in set row and set that particular elements to zero. Like if we come across a particular row, we'll set all the elements of that row to zero. And similarly, if we come across a particular index in set column, we'll set all the elements of that particular column as zero. So this is the actual logic. Now let's come to the coding part where you can understand it in a very better manner. Okay. So let's come to the coding section. Now let's first define a matrix uh, using which we can set, we can test the code. So suppose we take the first, uh, let's take the second example for better clarity of the problem. So let's take one, zero, one, 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 zero, one. Okay. So vector of int. Vector of int. So this is how you set a matrix in the form of vector of vector of int a equals to now let's write each of the rows 1 comma 0 comma 1 this is the first row let's set this initialize the second row 1 comma 1 comma 1 and finally the third row which is 1 comma 0 comma 1 okay now let's call a method set matrix and we'll define this on our own because this is our own defined method so we'll write the code for this as well so let's define a return type as void set matrix zero. Let's write zeros here. Name should be defining the property performed by that method. Always remember to follow this convention. Okay, so let's make sure that the parameters is what we are passing, which is a vector of vector of int, which is nothing but a matrix in C++. Okay, so now let's write the actual logic discussed. So first, let's take the number of rows and columns into account. So let's take n as the number of rows, which is a dot size. And uh, let's take m as number of columns, which is a of zero dot size. So just pause this video for a minute and understand why we are taking row as a of size and m as a of zero dot size. You will definitely understand. Okay, 
so now let's create two sets as discussed set of int beat row comma column okay okay so let's check the steps create two sets we have already created two sets numbers to zeros and outer loop to traverse the rows okay so let's create an outer loop for int i equals to zero i is less than n why less than n because n is the number of rows and m is the number of columns so we are just using those variables here i plus plus the inner loop for int j equals to zero j less than m j plus plus be careful with these parameters this is for iterating rows and this is for iterating the columns and this is a nested for loop because we need to traverse all the limits of a matrix now if particular element a of i j is zero so let's write that condition if a of i j equals to equals to zero what do we need to do we just need to insert i to the set row and j to the set column okay so when you will go to this tutorial of set or if you understand set on your own just we make use of this insert method in order to put or insert elements into the set so what we'll do we'll store the i index because it is representing the row number into the row set and similarly we'll insert the j which is representing the column number into the set column okay now now we just need to make this run for each of the elements so as you can see we are not setting those elements to zero here itself we are just storing the indices for those particular rows and columns for which we need to set all the elements as zero in the final matrix so we are not making use of any extra matrix here or as you can see the loop is only n square here which is efficient than the previous approach now let's come to the next final step for all the indices in set row set all the elements to zero okay so now we are performing the required task after storing all the indices without changing the matrix here itself so this is another way of iterating over the elements of a set you can just pause and understand this in a better manner and then resume the video so for auto r in row this is another way of iterating through all the elements of a particular storage class be it vector be it set or map anything okay for all this element let's iterate through that particular row so if we need to iterate through row we'll traverse over the column so a of j equals to zero j is less than m j plus plus okay once again if we are come across any particular row r we need to set that entire row to zero okay let's come here we need to set this entire row to zero how do we do that we just keep the row index as constant and keep changing the column index so that's what we are doing here we are picking particular row we are traversing over the all of the column for this particular row and we will set a of r comma j equals to zero again what we are doing we are setting all the elements of row r to zero that's why we are iterating over the column similarly if we need to set the column elements as zero what we'll do we'll traverse over auto c in column set for all the elements in the column set pick up particular element and then traverse through that row so we'll take i is less than n i plus plus and similarly a of what will come here for a particular column for a particular column we need to set all the elements to zero so that's why we'll be iterating over the row number keeping the column number as constant so row number is the first index index of the matrix so we'll keep i here and column remains constant so c and set it to zero so as you can see we have done now let's finally print and check whether our output is matching what's required so let's just copy paste this particular part for traversing over each of the matrix element and just print c out a of i j and each row should be separated by a space and each column should be separated by a new line so this okay 
let's check whether this is running fine or not and then we can finally discuss the logic once again okay so we have compiled it successfully let's run it okay so this is the output return let's zoom okay so let's match it 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 is the second row 1 0 1 and finally 0 0 0 is the last row 0 0 0 okay so it is running fine let's quickly check it for the first example as well 1 0 1 and rest once so we'll set the matrix here 1 0 1 rest all once let's run this code so we'll again compile it because we have made changes to our code and we'll run it okay so output is 0 0 0 0 0 0 rest all ones so it's a t shape and rest all ones as you can see it is getting followed so this code is running fine we hope that you have understood it in the best possible way and if there is any issue regarding the explanation just pause it for a minute understand on your own and then resume so that you don't you don't miss out anything important in this video okay so this video helped you understand the concept of set how to iterate over the elements of a set and finally the brute force approach and the efficient approach as well so thanks for watching all the very best